What's going on you guys and welcome back to the a -Ray Show. So over the past few weeks, a lot of stocks have been selling off. The stock market has not been doing too well. I mean, let's take a look at some of the stocks. We've got Adobe, a few of the banks, FinTech. I mean, we got VTI. So pretty much the entire stock market for the most part has not been doing too well. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a way to actually help your profits from getting diminished and also like a pretty good cash park and also a way to get a nice stable reliable income and i'll show you guys how i utilize this method or this stock as i'm going to show you guys later in this video to actually keep myself in the game and not struggling too much alongside the market so if you guys want to see all that stay tuned and you already know cue that intro All right, let's cut straight to the chase. The way that I hedge my portfolio against bad marking conditions and also generate a nice reliable income source passively is through cover call ETFs. If you don't know what a cover call is, it's basically just an option strategy that allows you to make some premium or passive income on the side while hedging against bad marking conditions if you own a certain stock. It's really complicated, or at least it sounds complicated. So I'll definitely link a video where I kind of talk about it a little bit more. But in this video, I'm just going to be showing you guys a way that I do it. You can do it all very passively you don't have to worry about any option strategies at all as long as you are holding this etf and that etf is an nusi or i like to call it NUSI. so this is a covered call etf that i keep inside of my emergency fund portfolio alongside another one which i'll show you guys later on in the video but this is the simplest way to actually get high yield percentage and also not have to worry too much about market conditions when it comes to why cover call ETFs are so popular, it really comes down to two major factors. First of all, is it's not as volatile as some of the stocks out there, for example, the S&P 500. So if we take a look at the one year performance, it's up about two and a half percent. So majority of the stocks that NUSI hold as cover call options are going to be stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. So the bigger part of the S&P 500. So if we take a look at the five year, you're going to see the same thing. It's not that volatile. It doesn't really go up as much. It doesn't really go down as much. This can be both a pro and con. In bad market conditions, you're going to be saved. You're not going to be going down like crazy. But at the same time, over the past year, if we take a look at the S&P 500 compared to NUSI, you're going to see that you're going to be missing out on a lot of gains. So if we go to the six month chart, and I also have another cover call ETF in here, which is JEPI. You can kind of see that the S&P 500 is going crazy. Meanwhile, these ones aren't as affected or they're not really going up as much as well. So that's the first thing is the low volatility. The second major factor is that you're getting a premium and this premium is nuts. It's huge. You're getting a huge premium. I mean, you're getting about 7.82% a yield, which is basically like a dividend. And with that dividend, of course, it comes with its pros and cons. Pro number one is you're getting a reliable income source and it's all passive. You don't really have to worry about anything. You just invest into this ETF and you're good to go. This is awesome if you're worried about market conditions or if you're close to retirement or are retired, you're getting a huge dividend yield. You're getting a 7.82%, which is way better than tons of dividend stocks out there. But on the flip side of things, the cons are you have to pay taxes on this and you're also missing out on a ton of gains. For example, the S&P 500 over the past year is around 25% compared to this ETF, which is around two and a half percent. So you kind of have to weigh it with your pros and cons. Personally, I wouldn't recommend it being a huge part of your portfolio unless you believe that the stock market is going to do very bad over the past, wherever it is, the next few weeks, months, years, and then maybe you're going to trade out of it. Let me show you guys an example of what I do and how I utilize this to make myself some income on the side while I'm kind of worried about market conditions. All right, so this is my Merrill Edge investment account, and this is an account that I use for one, my emergency fund, and two, a high yield savings account. So I call it emergency and high APY. So first of all, if you have an emergency fund, what happens is you basically just keep a small amount of money to cover any expenses, for example, maybe paying taxes or any other unexpected emergencies. And that's why I have this account set up over here. Second of all, <clears throat> Second of all, when this happens, usually a lot of people like to keep it in a high yield savings account. So you're getting maybe 0.1%, 0.5%, maybe even 1% at the most. So what I'm really doing is I have two cover call ETFs. I have JEPI and QYLD. 
So these are yielding me way more than 1%. I mean, if we take a look at QILD, we're getting 12.23%, which is absolutely nuts. Instead of just keeping money in there and not really getting anything, I'm getting that 12%, which is huge. And JEPI, I'm also getting 7%. So that's just a way I like to hedge myself against por uh, my portfolio. I'm very bullish on the S&P 500. I have a tons of growth stocks out there. I mean, if you guys follow my channel, you guys know I have a growth portfolio. I have my dividend portfolio. I trade a lot. I got crypto. So this is just a nice way little way to hedge myself. And if an emergency ever comes up or I have to pay taxes, then I got this fund over here. I'm still building out, so it's not exactly the largest emergency account, but we're out there we're going to keep growing and this is what this channel is all about so personally i like to have this cover call etf or these two cover call etf stocks to kind of just hedge myself and also have a nice little emergency fund and a very high yield savings account so while we're on this topic let me just show you guys how my portfolio has been performing and again we're not really expecting very high returns or very high losses so my current balance is around 2500 in the past month or so, I haven't really been putting so much money into this account. Usually I put like about 5% of my paycheck into it, but I'm in the process of transitioning jobs. Just got a new job, so shout out to all the people out there and stuff, you know, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, I have not been able to invest as much into this portfolio as I would like. But anyways, if we go ahead and we go down to the income section, this is the coolest part. So we can see that I have all these dividends coming in. And that's because both of these ETFs are monthly ETFs. So they pay you out a premium every single time. And this is again an estimate, so it's not exactly accurate. So you can see that a total estimate amount per month is about $19.17. So what I like to do is I like to reinvest my dividend. So the next time it's not going to be per se $19.17. It's going to be a little bit higher. And that's one of the things that I love about these cover call ETFs and keeping it in an emergency fund. It's just continuously stacking up and up and I'm making more and more every single time. So if one day I'm making 19, the next time I'm going to make so much more. And especially if I'm contributing, it, it's going to be even more and more. And I just want to be transparent with you guys. I want to show you guys the total performance and how it's been doing. You guys can see back in October, I was down about three and a half percent. And of course, without even investing anything, it went back up. Uh, now, of course, the stock market is not doing too well. So you can see that I'm back at negative 1.6 percent. But again, the amount that I'm making back through that dividends or whatever I'm doing through the cover call ETFs, it kind of offsets that 1.6 percent. So let's actually just put the S&P 500 just to kind of compare it. Yeah, you can see it basically somewhat mirrors the s p 500 nothing insane you know when the dips are there it won't dip as much i don't know if you guys can kind of see that it's kind of blocking it so the dip in the s p 500 was way worse than or not way worse it was just slightly worse by one percent and then the gains are going to be missing as well so it's kind of a two-way street you know you don't make as much but you don't also lose as much so it's just something good to know and you know who knows maybe you guys can implement this a different way i like to implement it as my emergency fund so anyways that's pretty much it for this video guys let me know if you guys want me to go into more detail about cover calls or this etf and let me know what you guys are doing and how you guys are using the strategy so with that being said that's pretty much it and guys remember everybody eats